Well, as you know, I like raised gardens. Yep. And raised bed gardens. This is an ornamental experiment I've got going where I want to show that your garden can not just be productive and grow food, but it can also look very pretty and ornamental. These are globe artichokes. There's a purple globe artichoke. Come out, harvest the artichoke, or harvest the globe before it opens up. It's actually part of the thistle family. You harvest it before it opens up. I love Italian food. I love antipastos and, and mm. globe artichoke is one of the all-time favorites. Combine that with some marigolds. They don't just look pretty, but they also repel insects or bad insects, uh, attract good insects, and even the roots uh, get rid of or repel nematodes or eels, that soil eels that attack the roots of vegetables and other plants. So it's a multi sort of thing. It's a double P, double P garden. It's productive and pretty. Yeah, double P. Some beetroots, three different types of beetroot along here. Just to even out, and as they get bigger, I'll thin them out. This is a, a bit of a crowd growing thing that I do. And even though they're crowded together, I don't thin them out. Well, we thin them out to eat them until eventually you get about 25 centimeters apart. And then they grow to size and you get your full size beetroots. But in the meantime, you're getting baby greens as you thin them out. Yeah. Mm. Do you find with the, 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 the metal, metal raised beds, do you find as the sun hits them, they heat up, they heat up and starts to get too hot underneath? <coughs> no, it's about bulk. Yep. Um, it depends only on, on what you've got in them. Okay. If you have not a lot of uh, sort of soil and that in them, if there's a lot of vegetable matter or mulch or something, they might heat up a bit quicker. Yep. But over time, if like these beds, they're mulched up to about here. So these beds will sink. You'll add more compost and more solid type material to it, more water holding qualities, yeah. and they'll get heavier and heavier and the beds will start to get more dense. And that density then is very difficult even on a hot summer's day for it to heat the bed up yeah. too much. So it's too much organic matter in there. Yeah. Much, yeah, fair. yeah, okay, cool. But if no, you fill it- This question I'd already, always thought about actually, mm. seeing the metal ones. But if you filled it full of sort of compostable material, Yes, of course, it would heat up. Yeah. But if they say, for hypothetically, this was full of soil, well, then it's the density of it, even in a hot summer's tropical or subtropical day, they don't they don't heat up to it that much. Right, right. Yeah. Mm. Great. No, they're really good. Do you want to have a look at these potatoes? Yeah. So these potato beds are three different ways of growing potatoes. This is down wrist method, standard seed potatoes that you buy from a nursery or online. The seed potatoes actually um, grown to be planted for potato crops yep. like farmers do. There's a special process they go through to make sure that the seed potatoes don't have any disease or anything like that. And that right. is just planted straight in and then mulched on top. Yep. Probably about wrist deep. These ones here are hilled up in trenches. And now what I'm going to be doing is backfilling. And now that they're up about that high, I backfill and I fill them all in. But they were all planted in, in three trenches, the same varieties as them. Yeah. But that's the experiment. One is done at um, what they call drills or, or trenches. And the other one is just a wrist deep one planted straight over with mulch. So you're going to see which is, which is most productive. Which is more productive, yeah. yeah. And this one here, a store-bought potatoes that had gone to seed or they'd gone they'd started growing and gone green couldn't use them so i've planted them with the risk method here and we'll see how they perform to the As actual to commercial ones. or the nursery type ones are they going to get more diseased will they actually grow yep. like they should or will these seed potatoes outperform these ones fantastic mm. And in okay. here, so the results of all these all these testing as you go, that's going to be obviously then changing what you're doing in the future and how you yeah how you yeah move forward. It's, yeah, it, it's interesting. Also, it's interesting for videos, yeah. but it's what I'm doing anyway to get an understanding of the best way to grow produce. Yeah, brilliant. So I'm learning, other people are learning, and it's and it's hopefully good and 
interesting content. Yeah. Yeah. Results don't lie. This is the old gourd tunnel. Yeah. That I made out of, you know, oh, the Rio really? mesh and, yeah. and it, it works. Put this together. Um, it's a bit, looks a bit rustic. I'm not the best builder, but it works. I've got um, di four different types of cucumbers on this side. Yeah. And then you've got these little lots of dill growing because yeah. of course dill goes with cucumbers. Dill is fantastic. You know, and uh, I want to do pickled dill cucumbers and fermented cucumbers. That's the idea. And yeah. on the... Honestly, you need to be able to get the smell through the, through these videos. You do, I mean, that's just you? fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And then on the other side, I've got four different types of beans. Yeah, that's right. growing up this side. And what I want to do, and then you've got radishes here in the middle. These are four different types of radishes, different colors. Yeah, this is a yellow, then you've got a red. There's your red there. Is that purple? Red and a purple. Yeah. You know? And I think there's a white one. Yeah, there is. Here you go. Right. So there's the, there's the there four. There you go. So you've got four different types of radishes along there. And what I'm hoping happens is that you've got the beans come up and meet the cucumbers maybe about halfway. You know, if that happens, not only will it look really cool, yeah, yeah. And make it a really nice video, but it'll be nice, easy to pick the produce. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's the experiment going with that. So there you go. I mean, your beans, yeah. beans up here are running quite well already. Yeah, yeah, these have got a head start yeah. on the other ones. These are a different variety to that segment to that segment. Yeah. So they're all planted at the same time. But we'll see how they go. We'll see how they go, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's half the that's half the fun that, that experimentation is. you get stuck yeah. in and yeah it is every season is something new yeah and if you're in a, lucky enough to live in a subtropical climate you grow all year round it's just the crops that change that's right yeah yeah we have no we don't have to worry about six inches of snow over the top of the garden no. so yeah yeah it's good and down here you've got sort of developing this is a very old bed though this asparagus some of this asparagus is probably ten years old. Yeah, right. Um, and some of it's new because I now want to convert the whole bed to asparagus. And so that's why I'm leaving it grow out and, and establish more before I'm harvesting it. But if you can find a spear. Oh, there's one here. Oh, yeah. No, but one little... that's just starting. Oh, so, so. No, just, there's nothing better than fresh asparagus. You can snap that off and have a taste yeah. of that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, isn't it good? Oh. It is really you know, it's, great. It's funny, I've only just started enjoying asparagus over the last couple of years. That's yeah. probably one of the best things I've eaten. Yeah. yeah. So that's, I think it's just, just like that. amazing. Yeah. I mean, I'm so used to cooking and eating cooked asparagus and then until I started growing it and then started chomping on it, I felt quite addictive. Yeah. Yeah. You'd, you'd come in for dinner and be full. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The thing with these bananas is they're great. You can see that you've got some beautiful bunches forming and that's fine but look how high they are and the older you get the harder it is to get up on a big ladder and bunch and, and cover those bunches because the flying foxes uh, and even the possums will crawl up and they'll get hold of them so you really do need to cover them once they start fattening out and get uh, scent everything's yeah. attracted to them so that's like why magnet. yeah yeah like a magnet so that's why at the back here I've started a new row and one day I'll probably cut these down, get rid of them, and I'll replace these here with the suckers that these produce because banana plants produce suckers like these ones. Yeah. And you just take, you just shear them off from the base and you replant them to where you want. This is a dwarf red dacca variety. So the actual banana skins are are red. Oh, really? That's pretty cool. Inside yeah, yeah. the banana is a normal banana. And these ones here are a, um, they're a, they're a blue java. And the outside skin is blue. You know, so they ripen blue, and but the inside is yellow So uh, and normal. And so I'm looking forward to bringing those bunches out. But the best thing is, they're dwarfs, so I won't have to climb up a big ladder and uh, hurt myself if I fall trying to bag those bananas. Like 
you do have to with these. Would, yeah. So that's going to be the transition, is the dwarfs are going to transition out from the big ones. But in the meantime, I still want bananas. And so that's why I'm keeping these large ones until these small ones get to size. Yeah, and so and bananas will take on just about any, anything, won't they? You know, in terms of actually how, you, how you're feeding them, what you can actually do. Yeah, them. yeah, they, they, um, they do like good fertile soil and, and lots of water, but yeah. they do like free draining soil too. You don't want to be too clay, but yeah. they're pretty forgiving. Yeah. Yeah, but um, once you've got them growing, you actually, it's hard to stop them. They just keep producing suckers and you keep them spaced out a bit and don't let them bunch up too much. They don't have to be like a farm. In the backyard, you can bunch them together and you'll still get good bunches out of them. Yeah. But if you get them to get too close and too bushy, eventually they do start suffering and you don't get as many bananas out of them. Just think of imagine what, what sort of a, um, a conversation piece it'll, it'll be when you, bring, when you bring out a bunch of red bananas, a bunch of blue bananas. Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. Yeah. So. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, that's that. And then the back here, of course, is the chicken and poultry free ranging area. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's just about, quails? just about just about bedtime. Hmm? Chooks and your quails. Yeah. yeah, yeah, chickens and quails and some ducks. Yeah. And I don't think I'll I'll go much more than that. No. I was thinking of turkeys, but they're a bit harder to look after. Yep. Okay. Well, so yeah, it's certainly getting that 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 time for them, isn't it? Starting to retreat back in their coop. Yeah. Yeah, pretty rustic in amongst the gum trees. It does the job. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's good on the eye and it's good for them. It gives them that shade through the hot summers. Also some protection from predator birds and, and yeah, I just think it's a nice environment for them. The whole perimeter of this free ranging area is electrified and uh, the electric point is just up there past that last banana. Yep. and it electrifies the whole perimeter, three prongs, so you can't get the foxes climbing either, otherwise they'll still get hit, yep. and it works really well. That's brilliant. Mark, look, thanks for your time, mate, and uh, thanks, for the mate. tour around the place. Yeah, really, no, thank really, you. Really, yeah. Thanks for your interest. Uh, we'll, we'll see you around the traps, obviously. Yeah, yeah, for okay. sure. Mate, keep an eye on it, guys. We'll talk to you next time. Get into it.